the winds on Neptune reach speeds of 1,600 miles per hour, which is three times faster than a commercial airplane. Temperatures at the moon's south pole reach minus 397 degrees Fahrenheit, which might be the coldest in the entire solar system. Saturn is less dense than water, so it would float if thrown into a giant pool. Jupiter's moon Europa is covered in a thick layer of ice, but underneath is a vast ocean of water measuring up to 100 miles deep. Water ice was previously thought to be rare and only common on Earth, but it can be found all over the solar system, even on Mercury and the Moon. Saturn's magnificent rings are a belt of space debris formed after one of its moons fell apart. Jupiter, Neptune, and Uranus also have rings, although not as splendid as Saturn's, and even some asteroids have them too. There are eight confirmed planets in the solar system, but evidence shows there could be a ninth, we have yet to discover it. Organic matter could have been brought to Earth by comets since it has been found on several of them. Saturn also has a never-ending storm, just like Jupiter, but it is peculiar in its shape, having six distinct sides. Mercury and Venus are the only planets in the solar system with no known moons. Jupiter has 79 known moons orbiting it, the largest of which is Ganymede, which is even bigger than Mercury. The Milky Way was thought to be a belt, but now we know it is a spiral galaxy. Footprints on the Moon can't disappear because there is no wind to blow them off the surface. There is a theoretical possibility of a white hole, the reverse of a black hole. Nothing can enter it from the outside, but light and matter can escape. Triton, Neptune's moon, orbits the planet in a backward motion, and it is the only moon that does so, although nobody knows why. Although there are trillions of stars in space, we can only see a tiny fraction of them in the sky. Cheryl, Pluto's moon, is half the size of its planet, which is why Pluto orbits a bit around a spot outside its axis. All the objects in space, including planets, interstellar dust, and whole galaxies, comprise about 4% of the universe. The rest is dark matter and energy, which cannot be seen and fully understood. Trace 2b is a planet where night never ends, and it's not your regular night with stars shining in the beautiful skies. Here, it's pitch dark and scorching hot. Trace 2b is a gas giant roughly one and a half times more massive than Jupiter, and its surface absorbs light better than charcoal. It might also have a faint, dark red glow because of its burning air, which is as hot as fresh lava. In the star system of 55 concrete, there are five planets, four of which are gas giants similar to Jupiter and Saturn. But the fifth one, or rather the first because it's closest to the star, is different in a most horrible way. 55 concrete E is so close to its sun that half the planet's surface is a literal ocean of molten lava, while the other half is in eternal darkness because it never sees the sun. The Earth is always turned to its star on one side, and between the scorching and the dark, there's the twilight zone, a thin strip of blue nothingness. HD 189377b, well, I'm not going to say that again, is the only exoplanet in the orbit of its star, and at first glance, it looks quite pretty with blue. And white swirls make up astonishing patterns on the surface. But these pleasant colors come from hard silicate particles in the planet's atmosphere, which means it rains glass here. But the worst part is that winds reach 5,400 miles per hour, or almost Mach 7. For comparison, the fastest wind speed on Earth was 254 miles per hour, over 20 times less. Thus, the glass falling from the sky travels horizontally at hypersonic speeds, shredding everything in its path. The following system, whose name I won't even try to pronounce, has three exoplanets, all slowly being destroyed by their star. This happens because that star is not regular, it's a pulsar, a rapidly spinning core of an exploded star. It creates powerful electromagnetic pulses in several directions while rotating several thousand times per second. As a result, the planets orbiting this deceased star are slowly being eaten away and will eventually disappear entirely. Kepler 70 is a hot blue dwarf star that exploded into a red giant 18 million years ago. At that time, it was orbited by at least two planets. 
The closer of the two was a Jupiter-like gas giant named Kepler 70b, and it still exists, but the overgrown star consumed it and transformed it into a blazing hot rocky world. Right now, it is one of the hottest planets ever discovered, with a temperature higher than the surface of our sun. It was lucky to survive spending time inside the star, but it is evaporating now and will probably cease to exist shortly. There are currently six Mars exploration missions on or around the red planet. Does that mean that robots inhabit Mars? The little green men aren't saying. If the sun were the size of a front door, our planet would be the size of a nickel. In other words, the sun could fit more than one million Earths. Moon rocks have a super slow erosion. Rate about 0.04 inches for every one million years. That's why the Apollo astronauts' footprints on the moon will likely stay there for 10 to 100 million years. Jupiter's moon, Io, is four and a half billion years old, almost as old as the planet itself. It's one of the very few bodies in the solar system with active volcanoes, and these volcanoes are powerful enough to produce spectacular views later captured by Earth's telescopes. Oh, Io is named after a legendary maiden loved by the Greek god Zeus. In the myth, Zeus turned her into a heifer to hide her from his jealous wife, Hera. Wow, so the cow did jump over the moon? We could use some more cowbells. Okay, enough of the cows, back to space. A neutron star is born after a supernova collapses. After birth, it rotates extremely fast, about 60 times per second, but this rate can sometimes grow up to 600 times per second, making me dizzy. Space isn't supposed to be black. There are stars everywhere. Shouldn't they light everything up around them? You don't see stars wherever you look because some have yet to exist long enough for their light to reach Earth. Another one of Saturn's moons, Iapetus, has a unique two-tone coloring. The difference between the satellite's two hemispheres is impressive. One of them is light, and the other is eerily dark. Scientists have yet to figure out this mystery. All of the planets of the solar system would fit between Earth and the Moon with some space left. Yes, there's lots of space in the room. Saturn isn't the only planet that has rings. Gas giants Uranus, Neptune, and Jupiter have their calls, but they are thin and almost impossible to see. NASA can convert plasma, radio, and magnetic fields into audio tracks and listen to what's happening in space. They record all kinds of intriguing sounds, from beeps to ambulance-like howls. At the same time, the area itself is an eerily quiet place. Some sound waves and vibrations exist, but people can't perceive them. The star's core takes up to 25% of its entire radius. Inside, gravitational forces create incredible temperatures and pressure, which makes hydrogen fuse into helium. This layer has a temperature of 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. All that energy moves to a zone called the radiative zone. It takes, on average, 170,000 years for the power to get from the core to the next convective zone. There, bubbles of hot plasma float upward and end up at the sun's surface. That's where a visible 300 mile thick layer starts. This gassy zone, and don't I know about gas, is called the photosphere. It gets heated to 10,000 degrees and consists of granules, cells of plasma, 600 miles in diameter each. Moving further, we get to the crown, the star's thin atmosphere. It's getting hotter again, with temperatures reaching three and a half million degrees, so it better not linger. The smallest of all the four inner planets, Mercury, is just 3,000 miles from the equator. It's also the second densest planet, topped only by Earth. Mercury has a massive metallic core takes up almost 85% of the planet's volume. Its nature contains more iron than any other planet in the solar system. Recently, it's been discovered that Mercury might have a solid inner core along with its outer body, which consists of liquid metal. The planet's outer shell comprises a rocky mantle and solid crust, just 250 miles thick. Mercury is too small to hold onto its atmosphere, which contains hydrogen and helium. The planet is also too close to the sun. 
That's why the solar winds keep sweeping away the little atmosphere the Earth manages to gather. Our next stop is the hottest planet in the solar system, with average temperatures reaching 870 degrees Fahrenheit. It means lead would melt if you brought it to Venus. The pressure on the planet's surface is the same as at 3,000 feet underwater on Earth. The planet's metallic iron core is 2,400 miles wide, almost as wide as the distance from New York to Los Angeles. The next layer is a molten rocky mantle that's 1,200 miles thick. Venus's insides are covered with a crust consisting mainly of basalt and are 6 to 12 miles wide. The planet's thick atmosphere is nightmarish. It's 96% carbon dioxide, 3% nitrogen, and thick sulfuric acid clouds. Now, on Earth, people are used to a beautiful sunset painted in orange, red, and yellow hues. On Mars, however, the ordinarily pinkish red sky turns blue as the sun goes under the horizon. Mars is much farther away from the sun than Earth, making the sunlight less intense. The fine dust in the Martian atmosphere absorbs the blue light and removes the warmer colors you typically see on Earth. Whether it's blue or yellow, both sunsets look spectacular. Humans have explored space for over 60 years, and the effort has certainly paid off. All the planets in our solar system have been studied, even the dwarf planets of Pluto and Ceres. Most of the exploration was done by NASA's Voyager program, which began in 1977. Voyager 1 and 2 collected information on the planets, their moons, and their unique systems of rings and magnetic fields. These twin spacecraft continue to send data back to Earth, and Voyager 1 is currently in interstellar space. In 2011, astronomers discovered an enormous water reservoir floating in space around a supermassive black hole called a quasar. Floating water vapors have been found throughout the universe but are rare. This reservoir holds around 140 trillion times the amount of water in Earth's oceans. It's one of the oldest, largest, and at more than 12 billion light years away, it's the farthest known to humankind. Sound waves make air molecules vibrate on Earth, which is why we can hear sound. Other planets and moons allow sound to travel through mediums like their atmospheres and oceans. In space, though, it's said that there is no sound since there aren't any molecules to vibrate and deliver sound waves. However, not all researchers agree, given that space isn't just a lonely vacuum. Between the emptiness are clouds of gas and other stray particles. So, depending on where you are, sound waves can be possible. Discovered in 2017, KELT 9b is the hottest planet we know of. Next time you complain about the heat on a scorching summer day, Remember that temperatures on this planet can reach 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit. That's because KELT 9b orbits close to its star, called KELT 9. This thing is way hotter and more extensive than our sun. The big lead might someday evaporate the planet with its intense heat. Kind of a sizzling solar sauna. Wouldn't you say? No? Okay. One moon day is equal to about 29 days on Earth. It takes that long for the sun to cross the lunar sky. People always see the same side of the moon. The Earth's gravitational field makes the moon spin around its axis slower. That's why it takes the moon the same time to rotate around its axis as to orbit around the Earth. It was only in 1959 that people could finally see the other side of the moon, thanks to a photo taken by the Russian spacecraft Luna 3. The other side of the moon is more mountainous than the one we see from Earth. It can be explained by the Earth's gravity, which made the crust on the visible side of the moon thinner. Craters on the moon were left by asteroids 4.1 to 3.8 billion years ago. They're still visible only because geological changes on the moon aren't as active as on Earth. That's it for today's video. If you like our content please like and share the video. Thank you.